My name is Wendy Rayo. Chad and Rochelle Carrier. And we lived on the south side of Lafayette. Southwest Lafayette. The flood was August 18th. 2016, so it's been two years. What we know is we have uh, record levels of flooding along uh, rivers and creeks. Uh, and because these are record floods, we don't know how wide the water is going to get in those areas. never really had an issue or, or worry about our home flooding. We were told that in the past one or two other homes may have flooded uh, years ago, but it was more of an isolated type incident. It wasn't anything where the whole neighborhood was underwater. We've got a brick faced house, but we're appearing mean, so I'm already 18 inches or so off the ground. Didn't think we would flood at all. We had water in our driveway when we went to bed Friday night. And at about 5.30 that Saturday morning, when we got up to let the dogs out, um, the water was already approaching. It was under the carport. Uh, it was probably eight or so inches up over the first step and coming in pretty quick. Um, we were actually in a cul-de-sac where we lived on our street. And looking down at the end of our driveway, we saw that the water was really rising quickly. Um, we looked out in our backyard and saw that the water was moving up to our patio. We hadn't had any issues with flooding in our entire neighborhood. We always had a plan in place for hurricanes because that's something living in South Louisiana that we're always prepared for. But um, on that day, never thought that that would um, actually occur. So no, we were not prepared for that. And we had a daughter with special needs, so we really started packing up and trying to get out as fast as we could. It, and it just took us by complete surprise. We never thought that anything like that would ever happen. My neighbor was coming in with a car trailer, hauling his daughter's car off. And that's when I asked, you know, how, how bad is it? Because I, I didn't go out to the, the uh, highway to get out. And he told me, he said, if you're not out within 20 or 30 minutes, you're not getting out. The waters are going to continue to rise in many areas, and so this is no time to let the guard down. Luckily, we had flood insurance, but I grew up in New Orleans, so it was just something, um, seeing all the devastation that had happened in New Orleans in years prior, um, it was just something that we had always carried. But for some reason, um, due to oversight with things that had been going on personally in our family with our daughter's health, it just got overlooked. And when the flood happened, I called and I said, oh, I think I forgot to pay, pay my flood insurance, knowing full and well that we had flooded. And they said, oh, you're still in your grace period. If you'd like, you can pay it now over the phone. I never whipped out a credit card so fast and I paid our flood insurance, so luckily we were covered. The repairs in our house um, that we had, even though we only had four inches of water standing in our house, it just might as well have been four feet of water because we still had to tear out sheet rock four foot high um, all around the first uh, floor of our house. So it was major repair. We did get um, you know, money from our insurance company, which had to go through your mortgage company and the whole process of getting what you needed uh, to start rebuilding. A uh, check was made out to us and made out to the mortgage company. So it had to go to the mortgage company for them to sign and, and give it to us to get started. And talking to the mortgage company, they were going to give us a quarter of an initial $10,000 check you can't do to, get, to get started. That. Well, you couldn't get someone to come walk up the driveway and smile at you for the amount of money the mortgage company was going to let you start with. They did do the shelter at home program, which it, it, was, it wasn't uh, beneficial at all. No. They just grabbed anybody off the streets to let them come in here and mess with your electrical. And they would come, they left electrical wires just hanging all over the floor. I could have burned our house down. 
We still had folks here from the previous flood. We were able to jumpstart that response with those folks, but we're literally bringing in thousands of people across the country to support this. We need to focus on is getting the electricity back on in these homes as quickly as possible so that air conditioners can be turned on uh, to minimize any mold impact. Uh, but electricity can't be turned on until we know the homes are safe. And here we are with floors that need to be ripped out and there clean the toilet and, and, and dis disinfect so that you can live in the house. Well, knowing that we had to rip everything We had out no anyway. floors. You can't live in the house. So why spend that money? They wasted money. Why spend the money doing that? Instead, figure out a better way to use that money for what someone needs at that particular time. They didn't tell you that if you accepted a program, it knocked you out of a, another program. Correct. Because we accepted shelter at home to come in and do stuff, that knocked us out of being able to get a trailer to live in for seven months. So, yeah. um, I don't think it's fair to put complete blame on any one person, but I do think that if drainage were more um, were improved on or kept up with. Um, tree limbs growing across coolies and ditches, I think, you know, there could be a better plan to maintain those things. Um, I think as new subdivisions are built up, um, I think that that needs to be um, looked into more fully. Um, and I think the impact on other subdivisions, maybe that are next to those, you know, the drainage needs to be upgraded, definitely. Looking forward now, there's some, uh, they've gone and cleaned ditches and they've done everything from a maintenance standpoint, but um, there's still some issues with either water retention that needs to happen and uh, probably some dredging in the vermilion or whatever else to get the water out faster. Now that we know that it's not a matter of uh, if it's gonna happen again, it's a matter of when it's gonna happen again. I think it's something that I'm always afraid of. I think um, if we see um, a heavy thunderstorm coming, I think it's something that I'm always on alert for. I think anybody that um, flooded, I think it's always in the back of their mind, you know, could this happen again to us? I think, you know, I, I laughed and joked about uh, only in South Louisiana can you go through a, a natural disaster, flood, lose everything you have, and then gain 20 pounds. You know, it's, it's just the, the culture that we're neighbor help neighbor. We just went house to house, either helping someone, uh, cleaning, doing whatever needed to be done, cooking. Uh, we cooked a big jambalaya under our carport and as people were coming to deliver sandwiches from out of other states, uh, they would sit down and we'd trade sandwiches for a bowl of jambalaya or, or whatever was being cooked. Everyone just banded together and it was just an amazing thing to see that, so that really instilled my, um, my faith in the community that I lived in. So for me, that was a good thing.